Welcome to another episode on the channel. Today, I want to share with you my seven top tips for setting up your brand new codebook for testing. So, we have a brand new codebook fresh out of the packaging. What's the best way to set it up? Well, it really depends on what your final use is, but I'm going to focus on my top seven recommendations while keeping within the rules for Washington State testing. So, here are the rules as printed in the testing guide. All examinations are open book. It's okay to use any original copyrighted material, including material that contains questions and answers. Copyrighted material may have highlighting, underlining, and index tabs, permanent only, prior to entering the examination area. Post it, sticky, Repositionable and other types of notes that are removable are not permitted. References may not be written in. Tip number one, tabs. This might seem really obvious, but these are an absolute necessity. Now, personally, I prefer tabs that are colored. Each chapter of the codebook has a distinguishing color, and some tab sets are better than others. We have a separate video and blog about which tab set is the best, and you can find a link in the description. So get your book tabbed. If it's your first time tabbing a code book, take a look at the instructions and start tabbing from back to front. I try, and not always successfully, to have the tabs layout so that the breaks between chapters or major sections are at the tops and bottoms of the pages, if possible. Again, Different tab manufacturers will lay out a little differently here. Tip number two, highlighting. Try to settle on two or three colors and use that scheme throughout. You want a light highlighter to draw your eye to the most relevant information. Highlighting a complete paragraph is not so useful. You want to use another color to make distinctions in your codebook to separate topics. Let me give you an example of each. Say that you had a test question that asks you to size the conductors for a single motor. Looking up the information in a keyword index, you find the reference, 430.22. Now, before you leave the index, highlight it also, and then grab only the keywords in the codebook. Don't highlight the entire paragraph. While testing, you want your eyes to be drawn to the pertinent information. Sometimes you want to be sure to exclude information. That is, give yourself a hint that something is not pertinent. The example I'm going to give you here is for testing. For the journey level test, you may be asked motor questions that are either single or three phase. No DC motor or two phase questions. So put a box around the full load current tables that are used, but put an X through the ones that are not. Those are not bad tables, but you will not accidentally use wrong, but similar looking table during the test. What about the color to make distinctions? Here's an example in Article 680. Pools, hot tubs, bodies of water, etc. Now, in most of the NEC, Roman numeral parts are used to take an article and divide it up into segments that deal with different aspects of the same installation. One part might deal with overcurrent protection, another with conductor sizing, another with location, and so on. Same installation, just a different aspect. Article 680 is different. Each part is for a different installation entirely. So if you skip past into the next part, you may be using a rule that does not pertain to your installation at all. On their own, part numbers do not stand out. They're of the same type and weight as the rest of the codebook, so giving them a highlight is quite useful. Tip number three, edge banding. Some things do not have tabs, but they are very, very useful. For example, 250.118 gives all of the methods of equipment grounding, along with the limitations of each method. So it does not have a tab. What I do is I take a marker and I rim the edge of the page. 
then when I close my code book, I now have a thin line that gives the needed reference. Now, you'll want to be judicious in how much you use it. Two or three, well, you can keep track of. But if you have a dozen of these lines running through your code book, it's no longer useful. Tip number four, underlining. There are two ways this may be useful. Perhaps there's a paragraph that you overzealously highlighted. But then there are a couple of keywords that you need to pull out and draw some attention to. This is one way to do it. Another place might be to give your eyes something to follow so that you're not getting off track. Just as an example, go to Annex C. It has an index page and a long list of different raceways and the tables that follow, they go on for miles. So take a straight edge and draw visual guidelines every say, Third row. Now when you need to look something up, you can easily find it. And there's not much of a chance that you're going to get off kilter and select the wrong page number. Here, a highlight may also be useful. At the top, two colors to alternate back and forth so that as you alternate between one raceway table to the next, you uh, realize that if you skip a table or skip into the wrong table, that you've done so because you've color coded them. Now, before I give you my last three recommendations, if you're finding value in this video, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button and the notification bell. Some of our videos are focused on getting the best use out of the National Electrical Code, while others are about electrical installations or products. We do hope that you check out the rest of the channel or our website. Links for everything are in the description below. The last three tips are more about helping you study the codebook with the way that your codebook is now set up. So study tip number one, take a look at your tabs. Don't just tab your book and say, hey, they'll help me get stuff on the test. They'll help me find things, right? Take a sheet of paper and make two columns. First column, tabs that are tables. And the second column, tabs that are in the middle of an article, but not a table. And you'll get about a dozen references. Get to know them well. They have tabs because they're often used. And if they're often used, they become the low-hanging fruit for test questions as well. Study tip number two. When you take practice tests and quizzes, take a moment to briefly highlight First of all, the keyword index, if you used it, and then the pertinent words in the codebook that led you to the answer. There's a really good chance that if this is a common test question, you will have some form or some shape of this question again. And then you'll be able to quickly find that place in the codebook again because your eye will be drawn to it. And finally, study tip number three, which is something that you want to pay attention to when you test because as you remember in the in the beginning you may not write in your code book for testing or have repositionable tabs or markers in it but for study sticky notes are great let's go back to our motor conductor size 430.22 and here it tells us that a conductor is sized based on the full load current times 125 percent however where do you find the full load currents, All right? So you can make yourself a note, 430.248, 430.250 for the references to find the impacity. And then underneath, you can also make yourself a note about the temperature limitations that you find in 110.14, or perhaps where to find the conductor sizes themselves, 310.16. Right, and that completes the picture. While you're studying, it's useful to have that note there. Just be sure to remove these notes before you test. I do hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments below if you have additional tips for tuning up your codebook. In the meantime, stay safe, and we will see you next time.